Hi there, welcome to Elm Colors, I'm Erica. Today's video is part two of our Color Long and Color Morphia by Kirby Rosanis. We are coloring the Pharaoh page. This is how far we got last time. We worked on the background. I did some crazy splatter things that if you don't wanna do, that's totally fine. And then I used some Crayola Super Tips to add a few colors here and there. Um, so now I have gone through and I have swatched some of the pencils. Again, this is our color palette inspiration. I meant to put that on the screen in the last video, but I think I showed the picture several times. So hopefully that, um, that sufficed. Um, this is the one that really drew my eye. So most of my colors are in this range, but I also wanted like the placement of colors and stuff. Um, so I'm kind of using these two for reference on that. And then this is my color palette here. Um, and of course, you know, you don't have to stick just to those colors, but if you use those colors, those, that's really, that's kind of how you use the color palette. You know, you can add other colors in that, that color palette is really just a starting off point. So I have decided on a few different, um, areas of what I want to do. So I am going to first color in a couple of these doodles over here. And that's basically what we're gonna be working on today is all the different doodles. And this is all gonna be pencil work. Um, that's not the right pencil. This one and this one. My poor little baby cream color. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to be doing some pencil work on some of these doodles. And I am going to zoom you guys in so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna go over colors with you first. So I'm gonna be working on um, this pyramid and this pot here at first, and then we'll see where I'm gonna go after that. Um, now these are the colors I'm gonna use. So I've got uh, dark brown, PC946, bronze, 1028, and goldenrod, 1034. And then I also have the Prismacolor Cream, which this one's almost almost gone, but I have a backup ready to go. So let me get you guys zoomed in and we'll get started. All right, so my one of my favorite things about Kirby's books is that he already has a lot of the shading detail added in for you. So you know where that you need to put your darkest colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my darkest color. So this is my dark brown. And I'm just gonna go in and add it right where the shadows are already in and anywhere where something would be overlapping. So I'm just gonna shade it right in there. Under the smoke and under this ribbon. After I colored these blue, I realized they probably like <laughs> kind of like a mummy wrap or something, but I decided that I'm gonna make them pretty, pretty silk silk fabric or something. Uh, I am gonna do a little bit right underneath the ribbon here. Okay. Now I'm gonna come in with the bronze, and this bronze color actually matches the marker pretty closely, so it's not gonna, it's really not gonna change um, what's underneath it very much and it'll blend make that brown color blend in really closely to that super tip color and I apologize if my camera is shaky I don't know exactly what's going on with it it has been really sensitive lately Uh, I was just going right over top of the brown color that I put in. I am going to add a little bit under this part of the smoke here. Fade that out. Yeah, and then I think I'm just going to go right along the top edge of this ribbon with this color. And we're just going to blend, kind of cover up all of the not pretty coloring that I did yet. 
earlier on the page. All right, now I'm gonna take this goldenrod color and this is just gonna change that marker tone just a tad, just to give me a little bit more of a golden-y color instead of straight browns. And it just adds a little bit of extra to the page. I'm gonna add that pretty much everywhere. Okay, and then this cream, I'm really just going to use it along the edges of my pyramid. It doesn't do a whole lot. It softens it up just a tiny bit, but not very much at all. Okay, and then if I want to go back in, I do wanna add this, oop, make this a little bit darker. So I'm gonna get back in here into the corners, like where the darkest shadows would be, and add that dark color right back in. You can also come in with a like a warm gray or a French gray to make those shadows darker as well. All right, so I think that's our pyramid. I might, I think I'm just gonna go across and just very lightly trace the lines of the pyramid here that he's got. Just to give him a little bit more definition. Okay. So there's the pyramid. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Okay, so now we're going to work on this pot. And same colors. I'm going to use the same colors for this. So I'm going to put my darker colors there. We're going to put a little bit of dark up here. I'm going to fill this whole thing in with dark. And then... Uh, since this pot is round, I'm going to have a highlight area through the center and everything else on the outsides will be darker. And then okay. We're going to use that bronze color again come out a little bit from where we put that darker color. I am coloring over top of the dark brown as well and that helps to blend those two colors together a little bit. And since prismas are so smushy you can really just kind of push down a little bit and it, it blends it all for you. All right and then we're going to use this goldenrod color. I'm probably not going to use the cream on this one. Okay. All right. I do want to extend this bronze color just a little bit so it blends a little bit better. Okay. All right. Well, there's our two dark brown things. I did have this down here that we could just go ahead and add in some shadows to. It already has that nice golden-y color from the, um, the two markers that I combined to get that. So I might just add that dark brown and blend it out a little bit with the bronze and we'll be good to go on that one. Okay, and then we said this guy was gonna be gold. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do so far on that. Next, I think that I wanna work on the skull and the bones and this other little skull down on the bottom here. So the colors that I have pulled for that are 1074 French Gray, 1085 Peach Beige, uh, 997 Beige, and again, the cream. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put my darkest color in where um, the shadows are already drawn in. And I'm basically just drawing right of a coloring right over top of those lines. I am gonna color the inside of the skeleton a little bit. 
And then along the teeth here, you just follow the little lines that he's put in. And then you can also color right at the top of the teeth and at the bottom of the teeth because they do, on skeletons, they do kind of stick out a little bit from the rest of the skull. Um, let's get the corners of this done. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we'll get all of these guys. All right. So there's that. I'm going to use this peach beige. Oh, wait. I was going to do... I am going to add a little bit right here because there is a ridge. So, like, this is the nose line coming out and down. So there's a little bit of a ridge there. And I wanted to add a little shadow right in there. Sorry, one more place. <laughs> Just a little bit right along the edge of the eye here. Okay. All right, so now my peach beige is going to go right over top of that French gray. And again, I'm just... Going right over the top of that, coloring outwards a little bit, bringing that that peach beige gray or peach beige color separate from the gray a little. one I've got is my what's this one 997 so this is beige and we do want to leave some areas for the highlight color which has got cream color so I'm not going to color all the way like one solid color all the way around because I want to be able to use that cream color oh, I don't know if I put that peach beige across this part Yeah, I'm going to have to readjust my camera, I think, because I don't know why he's being so shaky. So I apologize if that is bothering anyone. I don't know what is up with it. Okay, let's get all of this in. A little bit right there. Take this little baby cream color. <laughs> Sorry if my hand is blocking what I'm doing on this part, but it's, it's kind of hard to hold it in a way that everybody can see. So I'm just coloring from the, the colors that I've already laid down, like into the white areas, basically. And this kind of gives a little bit of interest to the skeleton, to the skull, instead of just being like straight white. It's got this aged, this nice aged look to it. Okay, let's see how I like that. I'm gonna darken it up a little bit down here. Definitely darken it up in the eye sockets and right underneath in the jaw area here. And then underneath the lip. Okay, and then for the teeth, let me get some of my Prisma dust off of there. For the teeth, I am going to very lightly with my um, French gray, I'm going to do just a slight highlight or a slight line of color along one side of the tooth. And that'll be like the tooth side that's in shadow. Okay, and then I'm going to take my cream color and kind of smush that around. I might come back in and do like a, uh, a gold tooth or something on that one. 
Okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the bones the same way, and I'm gonna speed that up so you guys can see. It's just the same process that I did on the skeleton. I'll go in with my French gray, then the peach beige, then the beige, and then the cream at last. The next thing that I think we're going to work on, and this is going to be another thing that I speed up just a little bit, I've decided that all of this smoke that's coming out here and there is all going to be like an orangey gold color. So the colors that I have pulled for that are, we've got uh, Mineral Orange, which is PC1033, Goldenrod, PC1034, Sand, PC940, and then again, the baby cream. Um, this one is, it's the same kind of thing where I'm just going to go through and add the darkest color where Kirby has the lines already put in for you. And then I will go over with each color as it gets lighter and lighter. <coughs> Excuse me, so sorry. On the on some of the smoke, I am going to leave quite a bit of white space. I'll color a couple just so you see what I mean, but quite a bit of white space so that you can see this cream really well. Now this smoke, because of the colors that I've chosen, is going to blend pretty well into the background. It's not going to draw the attention. And anyway, these, like all of these doodles and stuff shouldn't be the main focus. This pharaoh statue is what's going to be the main focus. So it it doesn't really... <laughs> matter how nicely you color all this stuff in the background, this is what's going to be drawing your uh, attention. Okay, so I'm going to start with my mineral orange. We're going to start at this top one up here. And anywhere where there's lines, I'm just going to, and I'm not pushing hard when I do this. I'm just adding a little bit of color right over top. And anywhere where something might overlap, I am going to add a little bit of color in to those areas as well. Okay, and then we're going to come in with the goldenrod and just shade out from there. Okay, and I'm going to switch to my sand, which this is a pretty light, light yellow, neutral, like, neutrally yellow color. So the cream in it are not too far apart, actually. And then I'm going to come in with the cream and just finish it off. And that is pretty much it. Um, anytime I have curly cues like this, I like to leave a little bit of a highlight around that as well. And underneath those, I like to make it a little bit darker. So you'll see that I kind of did... A little bit here and a little bit here. I might just go in and just darken those others back up a little bit. There we go. So that's basically going to be it. I'll do a couple more just so you can see. So, and it's sometimes it's hard to tell what's what, but really, like I said, this is not your main focus. So if you mess up and color something the wrong color, nobody else is going to know <laughs> if you don't tell them. Like if you don't sit there and point it out, nobody's going to be like, uh, you did that wrong. So, you know, there's some downsides to these Kirby books and there's also some good sides because nobody can tell what the heck's going on on your page. <laughs> All right. 
but I almost think I need a little bit of a darker color. Maybe on some of these guys, I'll add in some of the Tuscan red that I have. Yeah. I think on areas that it's going to be really, really dark, I'm going to add just a little bit of that Tuscan red in. And that will really, really darken that up. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, if you look here, so this looks like it's a background behind the cloud. Like, I don't think that's a cloud back there. So I think I'm just going to color it the same color as the background. And then there's a little spot right here that this should be background color, too. But like I said, you'll notice, you know, you you overlook so many different things when you color in these books that it's it's hard to, to get everything at once. So I'm going to do this last little cloud with you guys. And then, you know, I don't even know if these are clouds. Like, I'm not even sure what these are. Smoke, clouds, magic. I don't know. Magic? It could be like magic. Um... But he uses those doodles a lot in his books, and I think they're fun. They just add a, a neat extra little thing. All right, I'm gonna. Now this one doesn't have any dark lines on it, so I'm just trying to like make up my own mind about where highlights and shadows would be. Okay, so I'm gonna come in with my cream. And then I am going to use some of this Tuscan red to really darken up that shadow. I will probably come back over top of it with um, some of the mineral orange just so it's not super red. I want it to be more orangey than, than red. Yeah, that works great. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go through and color all of the smoke on the page, and hopefully I'll stay on frame for the entire thing. And um, I'll let you guys see a few more of those, and then I think I'll cut to those being finished. So I will talk to you guys in just a minute. Okay, and through the magic of editing, here is <laughs> the finished smoke. Now it really does blend into the background. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a white Posca and I'm just gonna add some highlights here and there. So basically, I don't really have like the words to tell you where. <laughs> Um, but kind of, I guess kind of on the tops of things, if that makes sense. So like on the tops of the swirls and, um, hills and stuff of, and anywhere where it would kind of help it make it stand out a little bit more from the background. So I'm just going to go around and do that randomly places. I would much prefer to have had a, um, like an ivory color Posca pen, but that has not arrived yet. It is almost here. 
um, but it's not quite here yet. So we're just gonna, gonna go with the white. So this is just gonna help kind of define these smoky swirls a little bit better from the background. And my Posca is being a pain right now. It's not wanting to cover like it normally would. But that's okay because I don't need it to be super opaque right now. Just need a little bit of color. Um, where else? Got a little bit here. Some areas right in here. It's kind of hard to see some of it because it does blend in so well with the background. But yeah, these, like I said, these are not meant to be the focus areas of, or the focal points of the, the picture. So they don't need to be like super bright. Okay, so over here, I'm just gonna trace that little thing a little bit over here. Again, it's just kind of on the tops of things. I'm not doing underneath Okay, that's good enough for now. I might come back through and do some more. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the next thing. So I'm going to color the ribbon now. And this is all I've gone through. I do need to hit another spot with that marker again. So this is that really light bluish gray marker. Oh, also, I did have a question about um, those markers and bleeding through the paper. Now, I will say on this book, uh, because this um, in Color Morphia, the paper in this book is so much nicer than the regular Kirby Rosanna's uh, pages. Um, I don't have any trouble with bleed through. So I'm going to show you the back side. Um, and these spots that you see here are from me putting too much of this gold coppery paint on there. Uh, but as you can see, no markers had bled through. The Neo colors didn't bleed through. Um, it was just me putting on too much of the paint of the, um, the uh, metallic paint. So that was just my error. Um, but even in Kirby books, it, you should always do a test on the paper because... Sometimes, you know, especially if you're in a different country, your paper will be printed on different paper than it would be in the book that I would buy here in the U.S. And um, you should always do a test in the back. That's what I really love. Well, not necessarily in this book, but in the other Kirby books, you know, in the back, they have all of the hidden object um, answers in the back there. Or in Fragile Worlds, they have all the information sheets, or all the information about the... Um, endangered animals. And so those are always good places to test out any kind of material that you are kind of scared might bleed through your page. And that way it'll let you know how much you can put on at once uh, before it does bleed through. And it's just a, a great place to test. Okay, so onto the ribbon. I'm going to zoom you back in so that you guys, well, I'm going to show you my colors first. So I've got uh, peacock blue, which is 1027. I have, what is this one? Mediterranean blue, which is 1022. Muted turquoise, which is 1088. And the sky, nope, pale blue light, I think is what it's called. Uh, sky blue light. Uh, it's PC 1086. So those are the colors that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna zoom you back in so that you can see what I'm doing on the ribbons and then uh, I'll kind of let you see. I'll do a few of the ribbons and then again, I'm just gonna edit it so you guys can see what it looks like after the ribbons are done. All right, I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I'm gonna use the peacock blue and again, it's the same technique where I just go in where it's darker, where I think it would be darker 
and I add in a little bit of that color here and there. And this goes pretty quickly. You'll be able to see. So I am adding a little bit more of a blue tone to that bluish gray color that was on there. And then this muted turquoise, I just, I absolutely adore this color. It's one of my favorite colors just in normal, normally, you know. Okay, my camera cut out. It was dying. So um, again, we'll start on this one. This is that peacock blue color. Anywhere where the lines are darkest is where this is gonna go. Then I have the Mediterranean blue. We're gonna go to this muted turquoise which should blend pretty well into the marker that we already have down. color in this area and then try to bring this pale blue in and blend some of that color out into the white. There's a lot of baby pencils I've noticed. <laughs> These are okay. So that's basically what it's gonna look like. I'll do one more section just to show you again. So you can see what I'm doing. Again, with the darkest color. And my Mediterranean blue. And the muted turquoise. And then when I get out into these white areas, I'm using the lightest amount of pressure that I can just to get some color out into there. But um, I really just want it to be pretty light. And then I'm going to use this pale blue to kind of blend into the white a little bit more. And if I feel like it's too, too blue, I can come back in with this color. I might even be able to add in some turquoise if I feel like I want to change the tone of it a little bit, but I'm kind of liking the, the muted turquoise color. I'm going to add this dark color back in here again, just because that's the darkest in there. Okay, so I'm going to finish the rest of the ribbon. It's just a little bit more, so it's just a little bit down here, and then this part up here, and um, I will be right back with you. Okay, got all the ribbon done. I think the next thing that I'm going to do is we're going to work on this pot and the snake and the bird up here, and this pot, uh, and then we'll just kind of work our way down. Um, going through the different elements that are left here to color. And then I do want to finish up a few of these things on this side today before we move on to the next video, which will be 
um, the, the Pharaoh statue itself. Um, we might save the dog and the cat for that day too. I'm not sure yet. So let me grab, I need to grab some colors that I want to use on this pot and the snake, and I will be right back with you. All right, so I've got um, a dark brown, which I'm just going to add in the shadows here. Anywhere where I think there might be a little bit of shadow. Down under here. I am going to use this goldenrod color to shade out from where the pot, where I left that marker off yesterday. This is a really good color to match that dark reddish brown or orangish brown marker that I have. Um, a little bit of cream right in the center here, just to kind of reserve a little bit of a highlight, not much. And then again, I'm gonna do, okay. And then I did grab the red marker again because I don't know what any of that stuff is in the background. So we're just gonna make it red <laughs> because I feel like I want more red on the page. I want a good amount of this red and blue and gold. I think that's going to be a nice color palette for this page. Okay. All right, so that guy's done. We can work on the little bird here, which I think I'm going to use some of the French gray. And what else do I have? I don't really want the bronze. Um, I've got, you know what? We're just gonna use two French gray. So I have a 90% French gray and a 70% French gray. And I think I have some white, so we'll use that too. So yeah, so I've got my French grays. So I'm just gonna do the darkest French gray in the darker areas. And I'm really just kind of outlining the lines, some of the lines and stuff that are here. And then we'll go over top with this one. And I'm really lightly using that. I'm gonna leave a nice highlight along the top of the bird's head and down along the neck. And the same along its back. And the top of the wing. I'm gonna leave a highlight on those. And then I'm gonna take my white and color all that in. Probably could have used the cream on that, but that's okay. All right, I don't really know what that bird was supposed to be, so it is now a grayish, brownish bird. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to lighten that up a little bit on his chest. There we go. All right, my snake. I am going to make him in the greens that I have for the flower stems and this um, the rush stems that are down here. So I have for my greens, I have um, olive, which is 911. I have pale sage, which is 1089. And I have dark green, which is 908. Um, and again, the same process where I take my darkest color and I kind of, anywhere where I think there would be shadows, I'm going to put that darkest color in. I am just going to go ahead and color this, all the snake in with, um, well, most of the snake in with this pale or this olive color. I'm going to use the pale sage in a couple places, but not very many because I'm going to use that mostly on his tummy. Um, let me make this a little darker here. Now this green is going to really stand out because there's not a whole lot of green anywhere else on the page yet, but you know, once we get the, the leaves and stuff colored in, it'll make more sense. I'm hoping. <laughs> Okay, get all that colored in. I'm gonna do a little bit right underneath the eye thing and along his mouth. Color 
that in with some olive. And then add the pale sage. All right, I feel like I'm missing something here, but. Okay. And then I think for his tummy, I am gonna use some of the um, use a little bit of pale sage and a little bit of cream, I think. Let's see how this works. So I'm going to do pale sage along, right along where his skin, the top part of his, his skin is, and then underneath, I'm going to use some of this cream. I'm picking up other colors. Darn it. Maybe even add in a little bit of the sand color because that'll make it a little bit more yellowy brown. All right, I don't love my snake. Um, all right, let's take this golden rod. I'm just gonna do the lines of the snake's belly. See if that adds anything or still makes it look crazy. Yeah, that's good enough. All right, I am going to color this part in here too with some of this goldenrod. Okay. This pot, I think I do want to use some um, gold gel pen and a little bit of the blue marker that I had. So this is kind of a darker blue-gray, but I'm just gonna do this outline part here. And then, yeah, let's go ahead and do this part. Okay, and then we're going to do some of this gold pen. So there's little dots along the pot there, and then this whole section here, and then all of the little parts to fill in right here. And a few little spots. Okay, all right, um, so next we'll need to move on to, oh, I need to do his little tongue. What colors do I have for that? I have this henna color, that should work. Yep, okay. I'm gonna hold off on this Egyptian dog and I think I'm gonna make my way down to this fish. And I think I've decided that I do want the fish to be red, but I want it to be a lighter red. So I have a combination of a few different colors. So I have this henna color. I have um, my light peach. I have Tuscan red. I think those are the three that I was gonna use. So I'm just gonna use the Tuscan red to put in all the shadow colors. And then I'm going to use this henna. I'm going to expand from that Tuscan red quite a bit because I want this fish to be a little darker than the peach will give me. So I want to make sure that I get this henna spread throughout the fish pretty well. Okay, and then I'm going to use the peach. Blend things out and around. Sorry if my hand's in the way, I have to hold this very specifically because these are little tiny pencils. All right, and that is 
the fishy done, I think. All right, it's coming together. So next we're gonna work on the flowers, I think, and the um, rushes over here, and then these two statue dudes. We'll work on those guys too. Okay, I'll be right back with you. Okay, so on this little star here, I'm gonna take my gold glitter pen and just color him in. I thought he would be cute, all glittery. <laughs> um, what did we say? So I need to finish. I'm going to do this little, whatever this guy is, this little soldier guy. I'm going to do him in blues. And let's get all of the jacket done and the pants. Um, and then I'm going to use some black for his boots and a little bit of this gold color on his jacket a little bit here and there his helmet is also going to be a dark blue and then his is that the one I want Let's try this one. I'm going to use this bronze for the skin. Okay. He's blue. And then a little bit of this French gray for his the stand that he's on. I need to color these leaves and stuff green so I'm using the same greens I've got PC 908 PC 911 and PC 1089 so I'm just gonna really quickly add in where my shadows are gonna be Oop, see that little piece right there it's gotta have some yellow in it oh wait no that leaf is coming down okay um, Let's do a little bit here, a little bit there, okay so that was all with the dark green, I'm coming in with the olive, I'm trying to, I realized that this uh, video is a little longer than I expected it to be. So I'm trying to get through these next few things a little quicker. These are all relatively easy little, little things to finish up here. Okay. Did I get all of that area? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to save the cat for tomorrow. These little guys. Ooh, sorry about that noise. If that, <laughs> that was too. Sometimes I just make random noises. Okay, I am going to. I'm going to use this blue. And we're going to make stripes on their little headrests. This is that darker blue color and marker. Go right here too. And I'm going to do the same thing for this guy, but it's going to go up and down on this one. Okay. And then I'm going to add in this whole area here is going to be blue. I'm not coloring in those those little squares. Um, this line. Okay. Now I really want to make this kind of a golden color. I want to do it similar to the background. So I have bronze, I have goldenrod. 
I have dark brown and I have, um, let's do the sand color too. And of course the little baby cream. Um, oh, so let me do the colors. I'm sorry. Let me do the numbers again. So I have dark brown PC 946, bronze PC 1028, goldenrod PC 1034, and sand PC 940. And then of course that Prismacolor cream. So I am going to start out by just doing a light layer of this dark brown in different areas where I want this gold color to be pretty prevalent. I think this these guys are just going to be like gold everywhere. So I'm going to have, yeah, and then this is going to come this way. down here. Okay. I'm going to use the bronze now. This is going to be kind of like an old gold kind of look, I think. I'm hoping anyway. Uh, let's do that here. Yeah, I think that that will work there. All right, let's try the golden rod now. All right, and then the sand. Yeah, this is, I like this, the tone of this color. I probably need more highlights on this, but that's okay. It is what it is. I'll say it again, these are not the focal point of the image, so it's okay for them to not be quote unquote perfect. All right, and then I am going to come in with the cream in all the areas where I don't have any color yet, just to. Okay. Awesome. All right, I'm going to use my Tuscan Red, I think, I think, to give a little bit of shading. Just a little, just a little. Okay. There's lots of red sections. I still need to come through and shade all those little... <laughs> those little creature things. Uh, I am going to give him red eye. The dog is also going to have a red eye. And then we're going to take this, uh, this one. I'm trying to decide if I want to make this all like a golden color or if I want to use like actual sparkly silver gel pen for this part. And I think the gel pen is going to win. Because I want spots here and there where there's sparkles besides just splattered around the background. So I think it's fun to just add them in randomly. Okay. Oh, that's probably the wrong place. Oops. I am going to do it to the top of this part, too. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to color this area in with the gold. Golden rod. Oh, and I'm going to do these areas down here with the sparkle pen. Um, if you, in case you're wondering, this is a, what is it, the Link Shine sparkle pen, or glitter pens. They're really inexpensive, but they have a lot of glitter. So, yeah, and then I'm going to use this gold color in between the blue. Get 
back down in here and finish all of that. I'm going to extend this part down into there. Okay. And I think the last little bit that we'll tackle today is I'm just going to go through and show you kind of my plan for the flowers over here. So I've got my red marker, uh, which I'm going to use on um, this flower. And these, I think probably all the flowers actually. All the flowers will get red. This guy is going to get some kind of white with gold things on the end. But all of the stems will be the same colors as this one. So that olive green, the, the dark green, and the sage. Um, and then, yeah, next time we will work on the uh, statue itself. We'll work on the cat and the dog and some of these little insects that are roaming around. But let me zoom you all out so you can, you can kind of see the whole picture so far. All right, so here it is so far. I like it. I think it's it's going pretty well. And um, I might, what I probably will end up doing is taking this gold gel pen and getting all of their eyes with the gold gel pen. I know I just did the um, the red for these guys, but like all on, on these little doodly creatures, I'll probably do a little bit of gold. Um, when you see me next time, I will have colored in the flowers. It's, like I said, really simple. I'm just going to do red marker and then a little bit of the Tuscan red on top of the, the uh, flower for some shading. And then next time we'll work on the rest of, rest of the page. So uh, I hope that you are enjoying this so far. Um, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you are coloring along with me, I would so much love to see it. Um, you can tag me on Instagram. You can uh, send me an email. Uh, my email is elmcolors at gmail.com. You could also send me a direct message on Instagram as well. So uh, thank you so much for joining me today. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.